Welcome to the Easy Access One Project J1A. Project J1A is to build a feature-rich multi-threaded Java-based email proxy filter from scratch. Welcome to Chapter 6, Approving Communications. I'm going to change the focus. Now, instead of focusing on functionality, we're going to shift towards focusing on security, or features, or however you want to look at it. In this case, a filter feature would be a security function. We need to move from being an interme intermediary in this conversation to being an approval process. We're going to approve the information as it comes through and heads to the email server. After we look at some approval processes we are going to make allowances for BCC which is actually multiple receipt to. You need to review your SMTP protocols and you'll find that BCCing is really simply an iteration of receipt to, which is actually different than seeing because CCing actually goes down into the body of the email message. Again you'll have to review your SMTP protocols in order to discover this. And then we will build in the ability to approve email addresses for the receipt or the to email so that a, uh, a threat from the outside world or a, an attacker can't randomly shoot emails at your, um, your organization forcing your email server to E return emails out to email servers that may or may not be interested in hearing what you've got to say. So if they were to randomly create email addresses to try to harvest information from your email server and then they used a fictitious email return address which is hugely popular, then all the failed harvest requests would end up going back out to the internet and doing a, a mail a MX lookup, trying to figure out where they go, and then of course the email server that does own the domain that it's going to or going is going to refuse it or not know it probably not even be available. So you end up having to black hole all these emails. So we want to avoid that that kind of stress and that kind of attack. All right. At the end of chapter five, we had the proxy project, which is the software we've been designing. We have the client which in my case is a telnet session, which may very well be another email server, or it could be your email program, what have you. Then we had our Exchange server, our Postfix or our QMail server. The client functionality is to connect on port 25, then we would connect to the Exchange on port 25, and I showed you how to hook in a buffered writer so that we could log the information. And after you've logged the information for a while, you can get comfortable with the way the process works. Now we have done some interactive work on chapter five as far as watching the communication flow and, and pushing the information to the exchange server when we saw fit. So now, we're going to change and improve our uh, filtering process, and we're going to develop uh, interaction relays bases. We're going to develop interaction relay responses after we approve them, um, and then we're also going to filter emails from file. I'm going to show you how to do all this. I'm going to go very fast, and this is not intermediate or beginner Java at this point. We are now moving to a very advanced Java stage. We're going to be working with multiple data streams, multiple sockets at a time, so get your helmets on. And we're back in Eclipse. All right, the first thing that I want to clean up is the buffered writer, which talks to the client from the end of Chapter 5, really has no designation in the variable name. So I'm going to call it the client buffered writer and the client output stream writer. This doesn't change the functionality. I'm just renaming these variables so that when we start pushing data around in sockets between client sockets and server socket, or, or server socket, that at least we can try to keep it straight. Then I'm going to do a find replace. 
Should be simple enough. Okay, you guys see that? I'm going to replace all instances of bw dot with client dw dot. Okay. I'm going to get these hooked in a little bit here. Input stream, output stream. Now we're no longer going to be inventing any uh, responses to satisfy the client. We're actually going to re get the information from the Exchange server and then relay it, and we're going to approve all communications as they happen. So I'm going to zip down here. I'm going to grab my uh, socket creation. Okay. I'm going to cut these. I'm going all the way back up to the top here. And I'm going to paste in these socket creation methods up here so that I can talk to the exchange starting right here in the beginning. I know some of you eagle-eyed eagle -eyed people have noticed that I'm on port 26. I'm running a test server, a test exchange server on 26 for the processes for the uh, for this for this progress that we're working on for this project. So that'll be 25 on your and your IP address for your email servers. All right, so we're going to start. I'm going to create a new variable called the exchange message. The exchange message, ex message. Let me clean this up. And the exchange message, the exchange message is going to be. I'm going to pull a read line, and that's not the smartest thing to do. I don't like using read lines. Won't have to. But I know my exchange, and I'm okay with pulling a read line because I know what it's doing. And I know what the client's looking for, so I'm going to pull the read line, which is going to be similar to this 220, this more of a hello. And I'll take that read line and I'll push it right to the client, and then I'll flush the data. Okay, so I'm no longer going to be inventing this 220 Microsoft SMTP. Okay, now. We know that the first command should be hello or EHLO. So I'm going to get the message line from the client input stream. And I'm looking for a command called hello. This is review. So either hello or ehello. And if I don't get e hello or ehello, I'm closing the socket and I'm returning. So we're no longer going to be inventing this reply. Right? And we are going to take this line, which begins with hello or e hello, and I'm going to push it to the exchange print stream. I'm going to trim it just for the heck of it, just in case. And I'm going to, after putting the, that line, that hello or hello line, I'm going to grab the ex message, exchange message, and I'm going to get a, a safely read a line from the exchange input stream into the message. And that line, I will courageously push to my client, my buffered reader for my client. And I'm doing, so these, these are just to make the world look better when, when I'm in a telnet session, these slash r slash n so that we get new lines. There is no right line function, I just don't think there is, which would automatically append a carriage return a new line. Okay, and I don't need this anymore because I have the actual result, resultant message. Okay, so let's pull the next line of information from the server, or... Uh, from the client, sorry. When you get a line of information from the client, and it had better say, mail from. So we'll check the command, which will be the first 10 characters because of mail from. We could do a first four characters, but like mail or RCPT or data, but I'm going for 10 just right now. In your world, you can certainly change it all around to what you want to do with it. Okay, sorry, back, mail from. And the mail from, we already know what our
going to push out to the exchange the, the entire line at this in this case it's message line even though the command is mail from now the mail from we aren't going to use at the moment but we are storing the variable all right and then I am going to push into my string the exchange message the next line from the exchange server and as I'm sure you've guessed we're going to write that line to the client and we don't need this made up line anymore and then we're going to flush okay all right I'm sure you guys can see what we're doing right now I'm I'm connecting the two um, I, I'm approving the information and then as long as I'm happy with it I'm going to forward the string information to the appropriate destination so let's move to the next line which is we're going to get the next line of information from the client and the next line should be a receipt to our CPT2 and if it is and if it's not we're going to disconnect a little review now here's where we're going to have some interesting stuff going on we need to set up a while loop here because in the SMTP protocol the um, the concept of multiple client mul multiple email addresses is, is actually the BCC we were working with so if there's multiple receipt twos they need to be captured so I'm going to set up a while loop and in my while loop I'll have my receipt to okay I'm going to set up a new boolean value called verified by default verification has failed okay now right about here let me break out of this and now we need to have a list of approved emails okay so we're we're at the first email right here's the receipt to the receipt to has been pushed into the string called receipt to and right about now we need to start verifying these emails exist so we don't want any emails coming into our exchange server which we know our exchange server doesn't service so there's no way that the email is going to be a good a good thing for us if it goes to a person who doesn't exist so it really might as well not to go there at all okay in order to do this we're going to need an array that has all our known emails okay so since uh, there's, there's a lot of data storage types we can use I'm going to use a hash table for this you can use an array an actual string array you can use anything that, that really excites you I'm going to go up here to the top and I'm going to create a hash table okay if you don't know what hash tables are you need to look them up it's basically a teeny tiny little database called a hash table okay hash table known emails and I'm going to create a function to load my hash table and I will hash table is part of Java utility package utility I should do that so now I need to make a function called load, e load emails from file all right so let's head on down I like to put my my methods at the end all the way down to the bottom here and I'm going to create a uh, new method public it's going to return hash table load emails from file okay and method and I'm going to create a module name I'll call this I call these submodules so I'm going to call submodule load emails from file I'm going to need a hash table 
and I'm going to return that hash table. All right. Now we're going to get some functionality going, which is going to be very simple. I'm going to start start a try catch loop. Try. I'll borrow this, from my favorite stuff. I got a try catch. Everybody see the try catch? I have. I just copied and pasted that. Code at the speed of light. All right. Integer i equals zero. Straight out of college on that one. All right, here we go. Buffered reader, new buffered reader, new file reader, file reader, and I'm going to create a file, a text file, a little flat file called allowed email addresses dot text. All right, and my buffered reader will enjoy that. I'm going to re-initialize my hash table as a new hash table. I don't necessarily have to, but I'm doing that while I'm in the string. I may not have to do that at all, actually. All right, new line. I'm going to grab a line of code, a line of um, information, and I'm going to pull the first line out of my text file. And I'm going to stick that into a string called line. While the line is not equal to null, I'm going to hash table. I'm going to insert into the hash table. Okay, now let me decode this for you. An empty string concatenating i, and then I'll add 1 before. So plus plus i means I'm going to start at the I'm starting at number 1. Now i plus plus kind of would have started at 0. I could have also easily enough just made this one and just an I plus plus and then I'm going to push line dot trim as the string value okay then I'm going to grab a new line of string and then I'm going to jump out okay that's a full function let me quickly go over this again load emails from file it's going to be a sub module I'm going to create a hash table called ht and I'm going to start a try loop starting at zero I'll create a buffered reader which will be derived from a file reader called allowed email addresses dot text I'll create a string called line I will push the first line from my file into the string called line then I'll start a loop well, line is equal to nothing, isn't equal to nothing, to null. Then I'll push put, actually, in this case, into position, starting at position 1, string string 1, the contents of the line. Then I'll grab another line out of the text file, loop back up, make sure line isn't equal to null. And eventually, I'll jump out of the, t the try block, and then I'll return the hash table. So in summary, this function grabs a file, takes the contents of the file, and shoves it into a hash table, which is very, very simple. But if it's the first time you've dealt with hash tables, then you need to do a little research and go check out hash tables. So now, we're no longer throwing an error. We now have load emails from file, making a known emails hash table. So now I'm going to zip on down to my receipt to. Here's the while function we made earlier. And now I'm going to I'm going to loop. I'm going to create a for loop from from well I'll make i equal to 0. I'll iterate and through until i goes through all the known emails. I++. So we're going to iterate through the hash table, which is called known emails, going from the first position to the last. Okay. Actually, this could probably be 1, but I like to start at 0 just in case somehow it stuck it into the 0 slot. Okay. 
Now we'll start testing. Our destination email, which is called receipt2, if our destination email equals one of the known emails in one of the known slots, known emails.get will get the, the, um, the hash table position key by the key that we're looking for right now. Then verified will be equal to true. Okay, so that'll go through all the known emails to look at the email that we're testing right now for receipt to. Okay, so my Boolean will now be equal to false or true. So if true, end curly bracket, then if it's a good email, I'm going to push that line message line, which contains the receipt to in the front of the message line, to the exchange server. Then I will pull the response from the exchange server, take the response from the exchange server, give it to the client, and then I'll flush. And since we're in a while loop, we're going to have to write the appropriate code to get more receipt to emails. But before I leave the if function, I'm going to create an else. Now the else is going to be if the email address was a forged email or some email that we don't handle. So what to do? What to do? Um, this would be a great case where we're actually doing some good as opposed to the evil that the email uh, attackers are using. Um, I could simply respond to the client and say 250-215-215, uh, okay, sure, sure you have a good email address here. Uh, we could log the problem. We could re certainly could forward it to the email to the exchange server. We, we would kind of be pointless if we were doing that. Um, it's up to you what you want to do with it. You could do a reporting process. You could log the IP address of the client who's trying to send you. You could do an IP address and the email, and you could create some sort of a text log here and um, perhaps the body of the email or something to that effect so that you didn't lose in case it was somebody in your organization who isn't recorded yet. Um, keep in mind, if you ignore this email, then no errors will be thrown and the email will simply evaporate. It will go to the, uh, the original recipient, but the, any of the BCCs could get knocked out. So you have to be careful how you handle this. Okay. And then of course, we're going to grab the next line from the client message line equals grab a next line from the client, pad it, and then look for your command. Okay. Um, we could probably get rid of the command at this point in time because up here our test is for the first eight letters of the message line. So, but that's up to you. I just pasted that block so I took it the way it was. Okay. So we won't need these two, this fake, fake stuff we were working on before. Oh, sorry guys. Okay. So now that we're done supposedly with the receipt twos, now we're going to get down to our data, which should be mainly unchanged. Uh, let me look through my code here real quick. Data, data, and that's happy. And we're just going to change instead of instead of inventing this 354 data end with, I'll take the actual message that we got from the client. And actually, it would be the DATA letters that should go to the exchange here from the client. Then I'll pull from the exchange what the exchange had to say about the DATA, which I know it equals data. So there's no point in getting too worried because we wouldn't be here if it didn't equal DATA. All right. And instead of writing this, we'll take the actual 
information as it came from the Exchange server. Okay. So there's no more client holding the bag here. Okay. And if you remember, we had all this hello mail from stuff that we were pushing to the Exchange to get it ready for the email as it comes in. And we have already achieved all that, so we can delete all that. And now we are at the print writer. You might have wanted to create this print writer, which would be the logging feature. We can move this logging feature up higher and start logging the information. But uh, the print writer's here, so we'll leave it here for right now. And the one change I wanted to make here, guys, is I wanted to have a breakout here on my spline reader way down here in the safe line reader function. Um, what I found as I was doing some research on some of the work I was doing, um, if the information shows up in a multi-byte array, 27 or 30 bytes long, um, the multi-byte array has to um, end in character code 10, not 13. So some of these things end in 13, some of them 10, 13, 13, 10, but it sounds like they all are going to end in at least 10. And I'm not satisfied with the way that they, I did some testing. I'm just not satisfied with the way the information is flowing. And I'm going to add this new line here, and I'll decode this for you. Um, instead of bucket zero, which is the one byte we're looking at, um, that's not going to work if I have a 20-byte um, array shows up. Obviously, the very first byte is going to be irrelevant. It's going to be some other letter or something like that. So um, if the length of the bucket is greater than one, is greater than zero, so that if there's at least at least one byte, then we'll take the last byte, which is going to be bucket dot bucket length, length minus one. So these two these two calls these these two uh, statements bucket dot length is greater than zero, so it's at least one bucket. And then the bucket length minus one. So no matter what, we're either zero or higher is equal to 10, then we'll break out. So instead of just a simple single byte, we'll be able to handle multi-byte arrays. One correction while I'm here, I put you guys on pause and I went through the code real quick looking for any mistakes, is up here, well, maybe some of you guys caught this, but uh, while I'm in this while loop, here, where we're verifying our email addresses, at the very end of the, this this while loop or inside this this while loop, I'm getting a new line, a new line from the uh, from the client, and I'm looping through until the client no longer says receipt two, and if it doesn't if it isn't receipt two, it has to be data, so I can't I would be pulling a second line of text. Let me just actually I can just delete this, okay. So, and why don't we just delete this stuff here while we're at it, too. So we should be good to go there. Let me save that. Okay. Now you guys are kind of wondering, where is this text file that you're talking about? So let me tell you, my, uh, your, your, your location is going to be up to you guys. If you're on Linux, then you're going to want to pull a uh, file system object that's like slash var slash temp or slash you know lib slash var lib wherever you are if you're in etc maybe you're doing a slash etc maybe this is going to be something very important to you maybe it's going to be your home directory wherever it's up to you guys personally I just try to keep things simple in this project and I'm just grabbing this from the project root and in my case I'm the administrator of this network and my path to my project root is users administrator workspace proxy project and here's my allowed email addresses dot text file that I made and I'll open it for you and it's very simple and let me scrunch it down so you can see the whole thing administrator Bing admin and PP1 these are the names of my these email addresses from this client I happen to be working at right now okay so it opens that file pulls out the email addresses, and then uses them to compare. 
I'll bro and what I'll do is I'll bring this up in the debugger and I'll be able to show you what's going on. Okay, now I shot down here to my load emails from file. I, I could have called this method create hash table from file or something like that. Um, I'm going to set a breakpoint here. Toggle. Toggle breakpoint. So I'm going to run Eclipse in a debug mode, and it's going to stop right here on this line if everything goes right. In which case, I'm going to be able to inspect the elements or inspect the objects. Okay. So bring up Eclipse in debug mode. It's now running in debug. I'll tell net in. And you notice that we terminate. We didn't turn. We're hung on this line right here. And you can see we're highlighted. So now I want to take a look at my this hash table object. Okay, so I highlighted the HT object, hash table, and I'm going to inspect it. The hash table object is, you can here's the contents right here of the hash table. The first value, value, key one value is administrator, key two is Bing, key three is admin, and key four is PP1. There's a count of four. And some variable things. I don't know what low mod count is. Um, and these are some of the uh, internal specifics that are important to this hash table. So if there's any other values we could look at, but we don't really need to. For instance, I want to look at submodule. I want to inspect submodule. Then Submodule is equal to a string called load emails from file. Great. So I'll disable this breakpoint. We'll look good. And I'll stop the process right here. And we'll run it in a regular process. Here we go. Running. Telnet. Kilo Jimmy. It likes it. Now I'm going to grab mail from benetbeno.com and then I'm going to receipt to administrator. It likes that. Now I'm going to make one up. And you'll notice how quickly that returned. I sent an email to adtorsgatalent.com and that you remember that sure thing we had there. Sure. Data information. Enter, period, enter, and it's queued. Off we go. So we have success. Um, we have created a filter. Now we are, we are interrogating the information as it goes through, making sure only the information that we want to go through is true. Then we have created a loop to load a file of approved emails, assuming your system isn't designed to handle that, I can tell you the Exchange server historically will accept an email to anyone. It's amazing. Um, then we have linked our streams together after the data command, and we are all set for Chapter 6. I appreciate you guys suffering through this with me. I'll have Chapter 7 up as soon as I can. If you would like to leave your comments or please subscribe, I appreciate it and have a great evening.